بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبع هداه وأما بعد قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى وتؤمن الفرقة الناجية من أهل السنة والجماعة بالقدر خيره وشره والإيمان بالقدر على درجتين كل درجة تتضمن شيئين فالدرجة الأولى الإيمان بأن الله تعالى عليم بالخلق وهم عاملون بعلمه القديم الذي هو موصوف به أزلا وأبدا وعلم جميع أحوالهم من الطاعات والمعاصي والأرزاق والآجال ثم كتب الله في اللوح المحفوظ مقادير الخلق فأول ما خلق الله القلم قال له أكتب قال ما أكتب قال اكتب ما هو كائن إلى يوم القيامة فما أصاب الإنسان لم يكن ليخطئه وما أخطأه لم يكن ليصيبه جفت الأقلام وطوية الصحف كما قال تعالى ألم تعلم أن الله يعلم ما في السماء والأرض إن ذلك في كتاب إن ذلك على الله يسير حسبك جزاك الله خيرا الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على ظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد So inshallah the title chapter heading is the same as last week regarding the explanation of the categories of Qadr so it's a part two of that some questions inshallah before we start close your books and your notepads we gave four categories of Qadr what are they? Four things that we must understand regarding Qadr. Ghayrukum. Someone different. Aywa. We have to have knowledge. Huh? Kitaba. No, no, no. Do it in the order. So we have ilm. We have knowledge. Mashia wal khalaq. So the first one is mother. Knowledge. Second one we said is kitaba, the writing. Third one, Mashia, The will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the khalq. The creating. These are four things that we must understand and we'll take in detail. I believe uh, last lesson we stopped on the question regarding the mas'ala ashar laysa ilayk. Correct? Regarding that we do not attribute or describe Allah or anything as shar. So did anybody find out how we gather between the hadith? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, what was the ishqal? Can you remember first? Yeah? Because? Because the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we have to believe in, Qadr. The good of it and the bad of it. So there's a word of bad here, shar. So then we have another hadith where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the shar is laysa ilayk. Meaning that there is no evil or no bad that which is attributed to you Allah Azza wa Jal. So how do we gather between the two? That is what we had to research. Okay, I can see uh, Aywa. Okay, yeah, that, that's a good answer. Close. He said that what we perceive to be shar, what we may think is shar, shar meaning bad or evil, may not necessarily be the case. Allah Azza wa Jal's wisdom, perfect wisdom, there may be some khair that comes from it. Okay, open your books and we'll, we'll see what Sheikh Uthi Amin has mentioned. Page 420. For those of you who have Arabic books, Sheikh Uthi Amin, he says that we can answer this shubha or doubt by the way of the following. He has mentioned a lot of stuff, but I'm going to give you the khulasa. I'm going to give you the khulasa, the conclusion and the summary of what the Sheikh has mentioned. He brings a verse regarding the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر That fasad meaning What is fasad? Corruption. So corruption now has surfaced 
upon the earth. The bahar, or abarri wal bahar, upon the sea and likewise land. Bima kasabat aydin nas. Due to the fact of what has been caused through the hands of man. So it is due to mankind's shortcomings and sins. Allah is saying that corruption has now come upon to the earth. Due to what the hands of mankind have earned. They, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيُذِيكَ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمَلُوا In order that they may taste, meaning by way of a trial or difficulty, of what their own hands have earned, in order for them to return. So, uh, we'll elaborate a bit on that. So, Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says, فَبِعْتِبَارْ تَقْدِيرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ لَيْسَ بِشَرْءٍ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٍ Regarding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed, then there is no evil in what Allah has decreed. Even if it means, حَتَّى وَإِنْ كَانَ لَا يُعَالِمَ الْإِنسَانِ وَيُؤْذِيهِ وَيُضُرُّهُ Even if it's something that does not go with the soul of, him, of human beings. It's something that their soul doesn't accept or is something which is disliked to them or even if you may perceive harm may reach them. It may, it may seem that. However, if we look at the end reason of what will occur because he mentions here ما حدث من الفساد وسببه والغاية من so what has concerned what the facade, the corruption that has, has come about, then we say that that corruption is sharr. That corruption is evil. And because of what is the reason of that corruption, it is the bad actions of mankind. So the corruption which is now upon the earth, is that a good or bad thing? And to Ma'i, are you with me? So that corruption now, is it a good thing? In the understanding of human beings, it's a bad thing. What is the reason of the corruption that mentions in the ayah? Because of the actions of mankind. So the outcome of all of this, or the intent of all of this occurring, then it is made manifest as the end part of the statement or the end part of the verse. لِيُذِيكَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَأَلَّهُمْ يَرْجَعُونَ So they may taste by way of punishment or by way of difficulty what their hands have earned. لَأَلَّهُمْ يَرْجَعُونَ So they may return. So they may return. This returning is to what? Is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's to the straight path. So, Sheikh Uthiyameen, he's saying that we may see the corruption upon the earth as something which is shar, which is bad. That which occurs to us by way of trials, difficulties that occur because what our own hands have earned at that particular time, we may see it to be shar, difficult. Like for example, if some harm reaches us or some harm reaches our children, anything of the likes, the loss of wealth, it may seem at that particular time that it's not a nice thing. It is sharr. How could this possibly happen? But it could have been because of what our own hands have earned. So then when this happens, then it is in order for us to reflect and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And us turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repenting to Allah, making that tawbah to Allah, fixing ourselves up, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is mother Khair. It is good. And that's why it is beloved to Allah azawajal when his slaves turn back to him. Turn back to him in repentance and they draw closer to him. That's why there are some narrations that the individual that falls short and then, then turns back to Allah and then becomes a better mu'min is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. So that is the answer to this here. The two ahadith that you may perceive to see that it doesn't make sense. On one end it mentions that there is no evil or shar 
attributed to Allah, but yet we have to believe in the qadr, the good and the bad of it. And we've said that qadr is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is in the Allah azza wa jal is hikmah. And as our Shaykh, Shaykh Abu Hakim, Allah ta'ala, when we were discussing our affairs, he said, qadr, qadr is a thing that is ilm sir in the Allah azza wa jal. It is knowledge that it is with Allah. Uh, almost like a secret with Allah Azza wa Jal. And the only things that we know from that ilm is what Allah lets us know through the Quran and the Sunnah. So what we know may not necessarily be everything that we need to know about Qadr. That's one thing. Another thing is Qadr is also a thing which is not, we can't base the Qadr upon our intellect and the realms of the dunya. Because if we judge it with the realms of the dunya, then we are limited in knowledge. Because Allah Azza wa Jal has only given us a drop of the ocean. As in that hadith where Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he met Khidr. And when they were upon the sea, and when the crow dipped the beak into the sea, and then lifted the beak, and then the drop dropped, then... Uh, Khidr, he said to Musa that the knowledge that mankind has been given is the equivalent of that drop. So you can imagine one drop in comparison to the whole ocean, how limited that is. So this is why even with that one drop, that one drop must be taken from the Quran and the Sunnah. Because our minds and our intellects cannot comprehend certain things. But this is why we have to have Iman in Allah. This is why we have Iman in these, the pillars of faith. We have Iman. We believe. Even if we cannot comprehend every certain thing. And that's why it's important to understand the bigger picture. That the certain principles that are set. That we take those principles. Like for example, Allah Azza wa Jal. La yadhlimu ahada. Allah Azza wa Jal does not wrong a soul. Allah Azza wa Jal has made haram any form of oppression, made haram upon himself as a rahmah for his slaves. So if we know these type of principles, it makes us understand other things. So when certain things occur in the world that we see, that we may perceive them to be that this is unjust. Why has this happened to such and such family? Why has this happened to such and such children? With our intellect, we think that that is something which is awful. But we do not know the wisdom with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what lies behind that wisdom. But we have principles to work with. Allah is most merciful. Allah is more merciful to his slaves than the mother is to the child. So that's what we work. So even if we don't understand, we know Allah does not wrong anybody. Allah is more merciful. Just as that mother will not wrong that child, her child, and what she would do for that child, Allah Azza wa is even more merciful. So from there, that is the thing that we understand straight away. That Allah does not wrong any of his slaves. And Allah's wisdom is perfect. There is no flaw in that which Allah Azza wa decrees. So inshallah, we'll move on now. So is that understood? Okay. Now we move on to um, some other kalam of the Shaykh, uh, where he says, Al Imanu bil Qadr ala darajatain, kullu darajatin tatadamana shayain. So now we're going through Shaykh um, Uthayameen's words now, some of the benefits. So there may be some tikrar, there may be some things which are repetitive that you've heard from Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi already. So regarding this, that Iman, having belief in Qadr, is of two levels. And each level has two components. Regarding this, Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says that the author categorized it into these categories for a reason. And that reason is because there is difference of an opinion's khilaf that has occurred regarding Qadr. لِأَنَّ الْخِلَافِ فِي الْقَدْرِ لَيْسَ شَامِلٍ لِكُلِّ That the difference of Qadr, it is not regarding all aspects of Qadr, 
but certain aspects, certain levels. And then he goes on to explain. That the, the knowledge of Qadr is from the most difficult and the ones that causes problems in, in, in understanding. Ashkal here meaning in understanding, in, in, in the knowledge of our deen upon a person. It's very difficult. So then he talks about the first level. The first level is we have mentioned is to have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief that Allah has knowledge of his creation and all of what they do. And that knowledge we have explained is to be al-qadim, uh, that is being explained as azalan wa abada. So now we'll talk about what the shaykh, he says regarding this. So shaykh Uthi Amin, he says, وَلَمْ يَذْكُرَ الْمُؤَلِّفْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِمَ مَا يَفْعَلُهُ هُوَ لِأَنَّ هَذِي الْمَسْعَلَ لَيْسَ فِي خِلَافِ He says that the author did not talk about regarding the actions of Allah, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And what he does, there was no talk of that because there is no difference in opinion regarding that. That Allah Azza wa Jal is all aware and knowledgeable that is not where the ikhtilaf and the difference of opinions occur. It occurs bi madha inna ma dhakara ma fi khilaf. Huwa hal Allah ya'lam mal khalq amilun aw la ya'lamuhu illa ba'd waqu'i minhum. This is where now the difference of opinion starts coming. Um, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know with his prior knowledge that what the slaves do regarding their actions did he know prior to them acting or does he only know when they actually carry out the action as for the mother of the salaf they say that Allah Azza wa Jal is aware prior al-ilm al-sabiq regarding the actions of the ibad, regarding the actions of the slaves. Then regarding bi ilmi al-qadim. This qadim, this word as qadim, you have to understand that when it talks regarding the sharia, it is a different than the linguistic meaning of qadim. Qadim can mean, can mean that something was not old and then it became old. But when he refers to Al Qadim in the Sharia to describe Allah Azawajal's knowledge, then it is described differently. Al Qadim here is not the Qadim which you perceive um, linguistically what we use day to day. Al Qadim. Hadi Siara Asbahat Qadima. This car has now become old. Because if we. If we use that terminology, then it means that a particular thing was young and new, and then it gradually became older. That is not the intent when we describe Allah's ilm al-qadim. The qadim, when we say referring to Allah's knowledge, as Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, لا أول لابتدائه As we have mentioned, al-azal wal-abad. There is no beginning to Allah's knowledge. And there is no ending to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. So let not one be mistaken when they hear Al-Qadim, when he's referring to Allah's knowledge, that they may perceive it to be different. The Qadim and he's referred to Allah's knowledge, and there is no beginning to his knowledge. And there is no end. Some proofs now regarding the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, some of these verses we've already taken, so I, I may go through it quite quickly. Regarding some of the um, ahadith and the uh, verses regarding the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. Allah azza wa jal knowledge, here the verse where he's aware of all things. 
There is no limit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge. Inna Allah kana bi kulli shay'in alima. Also the verse, لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding his knowledge, it encompasses all things. So in order to have that description of that type of knowledge, that, the, that necessitates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge has no beginning. And no ending. From the Sunnah, some of the proofs that are given. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْمَقَادِيرَ الْخَلَائِقِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote down the decree of all of the creation, of all that which will occur uh, 50,000 years uh, F1, he created, he, 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 um, Allah Azza wa Jal wrote down the maqadir al khalaiq, all of that, the decree of that which will, will exist before he created the heavens and the earth. Uh, 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth. And that which will, uh, that which is, uh, uh, befalls a person was not going to pass him by. And that which does not befall a person was never going to uh, occur, was never going to befall him. Pens have dried and the scriptures have been rolled up. These are some of the hadith that mention this. Now we want to talk a bit about Shekhul Thiyameen or uh, Gawdan. It mentions regarding also F1, one point as well. It is also established through intellect as well. So that you have Quran and Sunnah. Shekhul Thiyameen, he also brings um, an ishara indication to our intellect. Even our intellect, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ala ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa latiful khabir. This question is almost, do they not know? Meaning that even them, their aql will know that such a creation that comes about has to be a, of, of created and has to have a Lord. And if it's a Lord, then he has certain attributes. That is in Surah Al Mulk, verse 14. Regarding this description of there is no beginning and there's no ending, even though that we have taken this before, Sheikh Uthaymeen, he brings some beautiful benefit regarding this. He says, when we say al-azal wal-abad, azal, azalan means no beginning. Abadan meaning there is no ending. But what is the wisdom of that description? And it's as follows. When we say azalan, nafi lil jahl. When we say there is no beginning to Allah's knowledge, this negates any form of ignorance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, the, this is the benefit now. We haven't taken this. Even though we've said what azal means and abad, now there are the, the benefits of those wordings and, those, and how Allah has been described in that manner. If we say that there is no beginning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge, then that negates ignorance. Because if you was to give a time frame to when the knowledge began, then automatically what does that necessitate? That before that time span, he didn't know. And Allah is free of that. So, this is what Azal is. The benefit of that is it negates ignorance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah did not know. Then Abad, that there is no ending to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge, then this negates mother nafi and nisyan. This negates forgetfulness. So Allah Azza wa Jal does not have the attributes of forgetfulness. So no matter how far time will go, to whatever length and time span, Allah will never forget. So these are some of the benefits. وَلِهَذَا كَانَ عِلْمُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ غَيْرَ الْمَصْبُوكٍ بِجَهْلٍ So what is the natija 
or the results of this, then we say that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not proceeded with ignorance. And it is not connected with forgetfulness. And then he brings the statement of the Prophet Musa. Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam regarding when uh, what he was said to Fir'aun Ilmuha inda rabbi fi kitabin The knowledge of it is in the book is with our Lord in the book La yudhillu rabbi wa la yansa Wa la yudhill rabbi wa la yansa That's the shahid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forget In, in opposition to the makhluk, the creation, the knowledge of the creation, it is preceded. So the creation meaning mankind and us. Our, our knowledge has been preceded with mother, with ignorance. I mean, however old you are, just go back. At that time and a little bit time before when you were nothing, did you know anything? When you were born, did we know anything where we were born? We didn't know. So regarding creation, then the, the knowledge of the creation is preceded with ignorance. So the nature of creation as well and mankind as well, that we, are, we have that which is connected to Forgetfulness, forgetfulness, we will forget at certain things. And as we grow older in age as well, it becomes more transparent. And that is not with Allah Azza wa Jal. So Alhamdulillah, that was some nice points of benefit regarding the Azal and Abad. Then we move on to the statement of the author. Alim al Jamil Ahwalihim in Ta'at, Wal Ma'asi, Wal Arzak, Wal Ajal. Now we move on to the statement of the author where he says that Allah Azza wa Jal was aware, meaning with his knowledge, of all of that which will occur regarding mankind from or of his creation, shall I say. And then from the affairs of obedience, from the affairs of disobedience the sustenance, the risk that they shall get, and their lifespans. Regarding this, Sheikh Uthameen, he says the follow. This is made manifest in the hadith of Ibn Mus'ud, As-Sadiq al Masduq, that hadith that we've already taken, where it mentions that, إِنَّ أَحْدَكُمْ يُجْمَعْ خَلْقَهُ فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا نُطْفَ The long hadith. That when... You are in the wombs of your mothers, then after 40 days, or after one, um, the, the, after 40 days, there is mother. Ish al hadith? Abdullah. You need deliberately so I'll see if he's on the spot, if he can recall it. Aywa, you juma mother. Haba? So after 40 days is a nutfa. What is a nutfa? No, no. Nutfa. The discharge. Female and male discharge. Taib. So that's after 40 days. Then after another 40 days, mother, alaqa. Then it becomes a clot of blood. So how many is that now? 80. Then mithludhalik, just like that, referring to the 40, then it becomes how many? 100. 120 days. 120 days, that's when for Yurusalul al Malik. Wa yu maru bimada? Arba kalimatin. So after after this period, which comes to 120 days, an angel is sent, and then the ruh has been blown in. Then the soul will be blown in, and it will be um, commanded to write down the following. So that occurs when? 120 days after 120 days and in that it mentions write down regarding his actions write down regarding the risk all of what the sustenance that a person will get in their life and their agile their lifespan as well 
and where they are shaqiyun or sa'idun where they will be miserable or where there will be people of bliss and as we mentioned that also refers to as the akhirah as well jannah or nar so that is a clear indication of what the author was saying here that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of their risk all aware of their ahwal obedience and disobedience it's made manifest in this hadith then Sheikh Uthimeen, he goes on to mention, so regarding our obedience, ma'lumatun lillah, it is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our disobedience is known to Allah. Uh, our arzaq, that which we get by way of sustenance, is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our lifespan is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, وَإِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانِ بِسَبَبُ الْمَعْلُومِ أَوْ بِغَيْرِ سَبَبُ الْمَعْلُومِ فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَعْلُومِ So if a person was to pass away for a reason that is known to mankind or not known to mankind, it is known with Allah. It is known with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not hidden to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is in opposition to the knowledge of mankind. The, man, the knowledge of mankind do not know these things. The knowledge of mankind, we do not know how long we will live. And we do not know where we will die. We do not know these things. Which land we will die and where we will die. And from the reasons of why we are going to die. And in what state that we will die. So, Shaykh Uthiyameen, then he makes dua and he says, نَسْأَلَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى حُسْنُ الْخَاتِمَةِ We ask Allah Azza wa Jal that we have a good ending. حُسْنُ الْخَاتِمَةِ Because that ending is how we will be raised. Then we move on to the part now where it mentions, ثُمَّ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ فِي اللَّوْحِ الْمَحْفُوظِ مَقَادِرَ الْخَلْقِ Then it was written. So we're still now in Shaykh Uthiyameen. He's still explaining, even though we've taken some, Shaykh Uthiyameen now is going to talk about the Number two, al kitaba And likewise, هذا الشيء الثاني في درجة الأولى وهو أن الله كتب في اللوح المحفوظ مقادر الخلق The second part now here is is regarding the kitaba So we said it was in four. We said ilm first, knowledge. Then we said kitaba The writing. And that writing is what is written in the lawh al-mahfud. The preserved tablet. Everything of the Maqadir is written there. Lawh al Mahfud. Regarding the preserved tablet, Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says, We do not know about it. It's kafir, is hay'a, how it is. I mean, ayy shay. What it is made of, how it is. Is it made from wood? Is it made from metal? Or from gold? or from silver, silver or emeralds, we don't know. Taib, Shaykh Uthiyameen says, فَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ bidalik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows regarding how the lawh al-mahfuz is. And our limited minds, we, we think it's a, a, a kitab, when we hear kitab, what comes to the mind straight away is this, something like this. Alaysa kathalik, is that what you were perceiving it to be? Even though we don't make tashbih, we don't do any of that, but one can understand kitab. But Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, we don't, know, we don't know. La na'rif. We don't know what it's made of, how it is. We don't know. So, however, what is important that we believe is that there is a preserved tablet that Allah has informed us of and all of that which is decreed is written in the law al mahfuz that's what we have to believe wa laysa lana al haqq fi an nabhatha wara'a dhalik this is what ahl al ilm they do this is the difference between the major scholars and those who just come about who have not studied is they make things very easy for us and give us principles to work with so our our mind is not preoccupied as they would say with stupidness like how is this, how is that, that we don't know. So it's not for us to search regarding the lawh al-mahfuz. Whatever Allah has informed us, we take. 
Whatever comes in the Quran and the Sunnah is obligatory for us to believe in. Then he says, "Wusifa bikaunihil mahfuz li'annahu mahfuz min aidi al The reason why it has been described as mahfuz, the preserved tablet, that it is preserved min aidi al mean it is preserved from the hands of the creation. فَلَا يُمْكِنُ أَنْ يُخْلَقُ أَحَدٌ بِهِ شَيْهَا أَوْ يُلْحَقُ أَحَدٌ بِهِ شَيْهَا It is not possible from any of the creation to add to the لوح المحفوظ To add or to decrease from it أَوْ يُغَيْرِ بِهِ شَيْءٍ أَبَدًا Or they change something from the لوح المحفوظ مستهيل Not possible That's one. So it can't be changed from any of the creation. The second thing that why it's referred to as mahfuz. Mahfuz means tagir. So the first one is no creation <coughs> has the ability to change it. And then secondly, it's called mahfuz because whatever's in it will not change. Whatever's in it will not change. So he said. لأنه فيه شيء لأنه كتب على علم منه كما سيذكر المؤلف why because that which is in the لوح المحفوظ is that which Allah عز وجل has wrote from His knowledge this is why شكل الإسلام يبن تيمي the author of the book he says إن المكتوب في اللوح المحفوظ لا يتغير أبدا that which is documented in the لوح المحفوظ will never change وإنما يحصل التغيير في الكتب التي في الكتب التي بأيدي الملائكة. Rather, if there is any thing that needs to be changed or not needs to be changed, that's wrong wording. Let's rewind that back. That which we find that will change is not which is in the لوح المحفوظ. It's that which is in the books of what the angels have, what is documented the yearly. Or likewise, the whole year, one, the whole uh, uh, lifespan of a person, or a year, or yomi, and we're going to get to that as well. I don't want to kind of confuse you too much. Um, so the proof is, so the loh al mahfuz is here. Anything is there will not change. But anything down here, whatever books there are with the malaika that are written for a certain person, may change and alter according to. Certain asbab which we will discuss, like du'a or silat al-raham, visiting uh, and keeping the ties of kingship, based upon that. But that all follows under this. Here is already with Allah's knowledge knows what's going to happen. Knows that if a slave does this action, then this will occur. If this happens, these are asbab. So there may be little changes down here, but it all stems back to here, which is already documented and won't change. The final nitija here. So there's there is an example, the the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and this is also a fa'idah from our Sheikh Sheikh Abu Hakim, Hafizullah Taala. He brings the verse of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We were discussing this. Yamhu Allah ma yasha wa yuthbit. Allah Azza wa Jal wipes away or erases what He wills and keeps what He wills. وَإِنْدُهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ And with him is the أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ We've mentioned that is one of the names of Surah Al-Fatiha but it also means in our Bab it means ماذا? لوح المحفوظ So with Allah is the لوح المحفوظ that don't change that don't change Then we move on. Inshallah, this point, just write down what I've mentioned so far. We're going to elaborate on it because there's there's taqsimat. There's our categories that break the qadr down. Down into qadr al-ijmali, which is a general one. Then you have al-umri, qadr taqdeer al-umri, which is your life. Then you have taqdeer al-san, al-hawli, which is the year. Then you have taqdeer al-yawmi. We'll get to that. Just write what this for now. Because you know Ustad is trying to make it easy for you to understand and give you what you need to understand the next bit, inshallah. So, Maqadir al-Khalq, regarding 
the, that which is decreed for the creation, then that is for all of the creation, all of what is in existence. وَظَارِ النُّسُوسِ أَنَّهُ يَشْمَلْ مَا يَفْعَلُ الْإِنسَانِ وَمَا يَفْعَلُ الْبَهَائِمِ And that covers everything. That which uh, mankind does and even from the creation of the animals. Okay, now we move on. Come Kalamna. 45. Less. Okay, we'll take this point, inshallah. Regarding uh, First thing which we've covered this, but this is Sheikh Uthayyamin's explanation. Regarding the first thing that Allah created was the pen. Then he said to the pen, write. The pen said, what shall I write? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pen to write all of that which will occur in existence. So regarding this point here, Sheikh Uthayyamin, he says, فَأَمَرَهُ أَنْ يَكْتُبْ مَا أَنَّ الْقَلَمْ جَمَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pen to write. And knowing that a pen is something which is jamad, it is like an object with no life, مثلا, a pen. It has no life. طيب, if I said to this pen now, uktub, la yaktub shay. That's the nature of a pen. However, Sheikh Uthimeen says, فَكَيْفُ يُوَجِّ الْخِطَابِ اللَّا جَمَادِ مَا هُوَ جَمَادِ how will Allah Azza wa Jal address something which is um, an inanimate object? Why would Allah address that? So the jawab ala dhalik, so the answer to that is, an al-jamad bin nisbat al-ilal aakil fa yusbi an yuwajjuhu ila al-khitab. That Allah Azza wa Jal, regarding in our dunya, and in what our knowledge proceeds, but Allah Azza wa Jal, we mentioned in uh, the previous lesson, it's not the ayah here, but remember, does anybody recall that verse that we mentioned that Allah has the ability to make? Allah has the ability to make anything speak. Anything speak. And this is why our skins will speak. Our skins will speak against us. On Yawm al -Qiyama. Now if we look at our skin and our fingers, like how will, how will these speak? How will the body parts they speak? But Allah qadir ala kulli shay. So Allah is capable of all things. So just in that example, in that verse, Allah Azza wa Jal likewise is capable of all things. But here, Shaykh Uthaymeen brings a verse where Allah Azza wa Jal, then he speaks to the earth and um, he speaks to as sama When he spoke to the sky, then the sky answered back. Okay. So Allah Azza wa Jal has capable to make anything speak. That is in Surah Al Fusilat, the first verse. Also, The fire of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu waslam, when it was burning, is it perceived to understand that we can speak to fire? In our knowledge and our intellect, this is a perfect proof of what I was trying to explain earlier on. The dynamics that when we work with our religion, there are certain knowledge that is withheld from us. Remember, we have a drop of knowledge of a knowledge of ocean. So these are proofs now. In our world, in our understanding, how can we speak to fire? We can't speak to fire. Fire won't understand. If someone was speaking to fire today, we say he's majnoon or majnoona. She's mad or he's mad. But Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to the fire and the fire understood what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was mentioning and followed the command. So even though it was a fire, it was cool. So the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, did not feel the effects of the heat and burn. So these are some examples. And then, inshallah, I want to touch on this last point and then we'll finish on here. This is an important point. So move forward a bit down, down here. This here, this particular part is taken from a hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the author used it. And that is, فَمَا أَصَابَ الْإِنسَانِ That which is befallen a person was never going to miss him. 
that which is occurred to some that which occurs with somebody was never going to pass him by and that which has passed by a person was never going to befall him this if understood will make life very very easy it will make us understand the dunya will make us understand likewise in our trials and tribulations whatever comes our way it was never going to miss us and that which we don't have or possibly what we may yearn and what we may want if it doesn't come our way it was never written for us so if we understand these principles wallahi it makes life you see life different and you and you're better equipped to deal with what life throws at you so sheikh uh, uthaymin regarding this principle he says ida amanat bi hadhi al jumla if we believe in this um, sentence which was just mentioned which i've just translated if you believe in this itma'annat then you will have tranquility if you believe and understand what is mentioned regarding this sentence then you will have tranquility whatever was befalling a person it was never going to miss him by it was never going to miss him or you could have it in another manner whatever has been decreed to befall a person will never pass him by and you can understand it another way and whatever has befell mean occurred with a person was never going to pass him by so the first way you can understand it whatever has been decreed to befall a person it will never pass him by even though it hasn't occurred it's going to come another way to understand it and whatever befalls a person was never going to pass him by so for example if we have an accident or if we lose a loved one or a deal's gone wrong deal gone wrong can possibly fall into our sins but let's say an accident that occurs that was written to happen we don't question why did it happen to me tamam then the other part wa ma akhta'ahu lam yakun li yusibahu and no whatever has passed by a person or passed by an individual this is another way so the first one is whatever is decreed will come and whatever has happened to a person was never going to miss him this one now no whatever has passed you by gone gone by was never going to befall you was never going to happen to you this makes you understand for example the category of where you're in why am i poor and why is he rich why does he have so many children and i don't why does she have these amples of houses and i don't this is something that was never going to befall you so this helps us understand that why does he have three wives and i only have one wife maybe you may say that type but just different examples different scenarios type whatever as pastors by and hasn't come our way it was never going to come it was never going to befall us that which is not that which was decreed not to befall us will never befall us that makes us understand especially in things that we don't possess and have makes you understand makes you accept that what allah as a wajal as decreed just write these four points down and don't just write the following four points down and we'll stop here just put down number 1 just put this down i'll explain afterwards in the next lesson so at least we know where we stopped number 1 تقدير الاجمالي جنو ديكري
ಇಜ್ಮಾಲಿ ಜನರು ತಕದೀರ್ ಉಲ್ ಉಮ್ರಿ Umri meaning the, the life, the decree of the taqdeer, pre-decree of life, lifespan, Umri. Taqdeer al-hawli, hawl as in zakat, al-hawl means year, yearly. and taqdeer al-yawmi that which occurs daily taqdeer yawmi daily and don't ask me no questions about this now i'm going to finish now inshallah time is tight so no i'm only going to listen to those who are doing hibd taqdeer ah taqdeer what am i saying what's it called tasmiya tayyib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim